ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so inshallah we will continue with uh, in the chapters of relieving oneself or the ahkam of relieving oneself so the thing the, what the author says is um, one should not talk when going to the bathroom and then he sa- says one should not respond to a greeting or repeat what the caller to prayer is saying. He may speak if there is some necessity. And then he gives an example to guide a blind person who fears he may be harmed. If he, se- if he sneezes, he should praise Allah to himself and simply move his lips without making a sound. And then he mentions a hadith uh, from Abdullah bin Umar. أن رجلا مر برسول الله صلى الله ورسول ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول فسلم فسلم فلم يرد عليه وفي ابن عمر that a man passed by the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he was urinating or he greeted him while he was urinating so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not did not return it to him or did not respond to him and the author says this is related by the group except al Bukhari so meaning Muslim and Nasai, Abu Dawood, the Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah. And then he continues uh, in mentioning a hadith from Abu Sa'id, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يخرج الرجلان يضربان الغائط كاشفين عن عورتهما أو عن عورتهما يتحدثان فإن الله تعالى يمقط على ذلك. Or from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said um, and here there's a mistranslation so I'll just read it how it is in the, it says isn't it true that Allah detests those who converse while they relieve themselves and he says this is related by Ahmed, Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah and then he says this hadith seems to support uh, the position that it is forbidden to talk many scholars however say that it is only disliked not forbidden so this is what the author mentions. So first, there's, I'll mention a few things about the actual translation. So the, the translation of the hadith from Abu Sa'id, so for whoever has the actual book, um, it's an incorrect translation. What it should actually say is that no two men should go out um, and defecate and uncover their auras um, uh, while speaking. Or, not, or that they should not go to the washroom uncovering their auras while speaking as Allah detests or Allah hates that. So that's the actual correct um, uh, translation of the hadith. Um, and then um, he, there's something missing from the actual the translation as well. Uh, it should also say that the outward understanding of the hadith would indicate that it's haram um, to speak, but the ijma' Um, proves that it's not, or that the it's not for it's not forbidden. It's only disliked. So that's missing from the from the English. So meaning that, um, or the author saying that this hadith, which would indicate that it's haram, because if he's saying that Allah detests or Allah hates that, then obviously it's something forbidden. But he's he's saying that there's a consensus um, from the scholars that it doesn't mean that it's forbidden. It's only that it's disliked. It's there. It's written. Is it? Yeah. Well, the one I had didn't have it. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is um, just a discussion on speaking in the washroom and we already discussed a few weeks ago about mentioning Allah's name in the washroom Um, so that would relate more to returning the salam to someone as well as repeating what the mu'adhan is saying which is what the, the author referred to and saying alhamdulillah if one sneezes and so on. So as we mentioned um, a few weeks ago, the strongest opinion is that those things are permissible in the washroom as long as someone isn't actually go- relieving themselves at the time. So if someone isn't relieving themselves, then after that point it's permissible um, to mention Allah's name, whether it's re- repeating the adhan or re- re- returning the salam to someone um, or something, as long as the person isn't actually relieving himself at the time. So that's related to the first half of what the author mentioned. The second half is just the actual speaking itself. So that speaking things that aren't um, mentioning Allah's name. And there's a number of opinions on this topic. Um, uh, well, first actually I'll mention about the hadith 
that the author mentioned. So the one from Abu Sa'id, radiallahu anhu. Um, it's actually a weak hadith. There is a many defects in the hadith. I'm not going to go into right now, just which because. Hadith? Which hadith? The first one or the second one? Abu, mm. Abu Sa'id. The one that was the result of the translation. Oh, okay. Inna Allah yamqutu ala dalik. So that's a weak hadith. The first one's obviously authentic. It's narrated by Imam Muslim and Nasa'i and others. <coughs> So that's the first issue to mention, or, or the, or the, you know, or the second issue to mention, um, with regards to the opinions of speaking in the washroom. Um, then there's a number of opinions. The first um, is that it's disliked, so it's makruh, unless there's a need, um, and that's the main opinion of the four madhab. So the Ahnaf, the Malikiyah, the Shafi'iyah, and the Hanabila, that they hold it to be disliked to speak in the washroom unless there's a need to speak. Is this while you're leaving yourself? No, no, just in the bathroom in general. <coughs> the second opinion is that it's it's dis it's har- it's disliked, but that even includes things like clearing one's throat. So, for example, if someone, if you're in a washroom where there was no lock and someone was you know uh, you know and you, uh, someone entered the washroom and you wanted them to know that someone was in that stall, that it would be disliked to actually clear your throat to indicate something to somebody else. Um, and that's some of the ahnaf hold that opinion. Um, another opinion is that it's haram, so it's abs- like it's it's actually forbidden to speak in the washroom. So meaning that the person, if he spoke in the bathroom, it would be he would uh, receive sins for that. And that's the opinion of some of the hanbalis. Um, and also another opinion is that uh, it's forbidden to speak while one's relieving oneself and it's not related to the washroom itself. So similar to what we said earlier um, about mentioning Allah's name, that it's related to the act itself, it has nothing to do with the actual place. And that was the opinion of some of the Shafi'is. And the last opinion is that all that's forbidden is if it's two two people speaking to each other while they've uncovered their awras and they're actually relieving themselves at the time. So they stick to the actual exact phrasing of the hadith from Abu, Abu Sa'id and they say unless it falls in this hadith exactly then there's no reason to say it's forbidden because the Prophet Sallallahu gave specific or in this hadith gave or this hadith contains specific characteristics or descriptions so if these descriptions aren't met then the forbiddens can't be met so those are the opinion and then there's last opinion that it's that is permissible um, and that's some of the current day scholars have, have mentioned that so, and all of it goes back to the ahadith that the author mentioned. There's nothing specific other than these ahadith. So we have some ahadith where the Prophet Sallallahu didn't return the salam to people. And then we have this weak hadith from Abu Sa'id in which um, the, these characteristics were mentioned. But as we mentioned, it's weak, so it's not usable. So these are the opinions of the scholars. Allahu alam, you know, if there's a lack of evidence, then we can't really... Um, forbid or even say that it's disliked to speak in the bathroom um, because if there's no evidence then as we talked about before anything that we say is obligatory or recommended or uh, makruh or disliked or that it's forbidden or haram we always need an evidence to do so so if someone says something is not allowed or you have to do something it's not upon the person who doesn't agree to prove it it's upon the person who's making that claim to prove it, and as we, you know, we've spoke, spoken about this rule time and time again. If someone comes and says it's disliked for you to do so, or you shouldn't do this, we don't have to say we, it, we don't have to say or or show evidence that it's allowed. It's upon the person who says that it's obligatory or or says that it's um, haram to show us the evidence. So Allahu alam, out of all those opinions, the one that it's permissible to speak in the washroom. Um, is uh, is the strongest opinion. So, are there any questions before we move to the next section? Yeah, uh, second opinion. The second opinion. Yeah. Which which one do you have down Just as the second? Like to make that you make a gesture. In the Some of the ahnaf. Okay, and uh, how about the fourth and fifth opinion as well? The only only while one daughters are uncovered and relieving themselves, and the fifth opinion that is permissible. That's some of the ahnaf as well, and then the that that is permissible is just some. Some scholars nowadays have taken that opinion. So it's permissible. Yeah, because there's no evidence. Mm. 
Like if someone said to you now it's haram or it's it's disliked, what, what, what evidence would they show? Well, uh, when he was uh, revealing and uh, revealing himself, and then uh, and then uh, in Bukhari, Muslim, Hadith. Oh, in Jama'ah, sorry. That's because Allah, was, uh, Allah's name was mentioned. It's the salam though, right? So Allah because, okay, wasn't because him. So when you... When you so, I mean, unless you someone said that it's because of the... It's speaking that it's haram, then then it would be haram only when we go to the washroom speaking. So either, you know... I think that's how I understood the hadith. It's because it was wild. It was wild. Mm-hmm. And then we even see before that it's most likely because the Prophet said it was a horn and Allahu alam, I mean, because he said, while I'm while I'm in that s- s- state. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's while he's here, and then he said, if you see me in that state, don't don't say salam to me because I won't return it. So he didn't say, uh, don't speak to me because I won't speak to you. He said, don't say salam because I won't return it. So Allahu alam, spe- specific to mentioning Allah's name. At the time of the. Uh, of, of, you, you, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So so that that that's some of some of the Hanabila. So basically mention Allah's name in the bathroom. It's allowed unless it's allowed. you go into the washroom. Exactly, unless you are... Uh, <coughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, yani in conclusion, it's permissible to mention Allah's name in the washroom, but not while you're relieving yourself. Right. But you're allowed to speak in the washroom and when you're relieving yourself. Well, I can't see any well, evidence to say that it's you can't... It's the only evidence we have is whether it's the sca- Whether it's like, you know, un- un- unacceptable... Uh, culturally or just even as as like human beings mm-hmm. that's a separate issue that's uh, for evidence wise it's all we have proving anything is forbidden is saying the word saying the salam during relieving yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Allah's yeah. Names. yeah yeah allah's names but it's actually the salam not allah's name no, no, no. allah's mentioned in the salam so we're going to categorize right right right, right, right how would you okay. define like a bathroom is the bathroom where we actually defecate or is it where we make a listen because like a bathroom now is not like the bathroom back in well, the Well, lots, lots of scholars nowadays yeah. say the bathrooms that we have in our homes, they, they don't apply to this anyway. Yeah. So lots of scholars have said that. I, I, exactly. So let's say we're making a boot here in the bathroom. <coughs> Even though we call it the general vicinity, a, ba- mm-hmm. a bathroom, it's not all entirely a bathroom. Like, right, right. You would say like <coughs> that we, uh, where we relieve ourselves is like, what would apply to the actual hadith when we leave this area and we go and make wudu? That would be like a totally different area. Allah alam, the, to- the toilet area would be, yeah, would be the area. And then everything else would like be like the, the the shower area and the, the sink area. It should be. Allah alam, it wouldn't apply. Okay, so would these hadith apply to the toilet area or something, like not to where we make wudu? Because well, no, because even that we said like unless you're going to the washroom. Is when it's forbidden, right? Like when you're actually relieving yourself. Yeah, exactly. So if you're relieving yourself, it doesn't matter where you are. So it, yeah, exactly. Like if you're outside or you're in the, t- I mean, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Okay, so it's well, the top. more specific to the act. I don't know where you do that, bro. <laughs> so it's more specific to the act. It's specific to the act, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so next, the author says one should not face nor turn his back to the qibla while relieving himself. And then he mentions the hadith from Abu Huraira uh, radiallahu anhu um, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said إِذَا أَتَيْتُمُ الْغَائِطِ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةِ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا وَلَكِنْ شَرِّقُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا um, And then the, oh, which the author translated that or the, the translators mentioned it as from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when one of you relieves himself he should neither face the qibla nor turn his back to it. And he says that's related by Ahmed and Muslim. Um, and then he continues, he says the prohibition implies that it is only disliked. So meaning that it's only makruh. And then he says, uh, as Ibn Umar narrated that once he went to Hafsa's house uh, where he saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam relieving himself while facing a sham and he had his back to the Kaaba, and he says that's related by the group. So Al Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood to the to the end of the group. And then so he says, some reconcile these hadith by saying that in the desert, um, it is forbidden to face or turn one's back to the to the Kaaba 
while it is permitted in buildings. And then he mentions Marwan al it says al Asghar, it should be al Asfar. Um, or at least in the translation that I have, it should be Marwan al Asfar said, I saw Umar sitting on his she camel uh, facing the qibla. It should say sitting. There's there's a mistranslation in this. We'll, we'll, we'll mention it in a bit. He says uh, facing the qibla while urinating, and he said, I said, O oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, is it not forbidden? So he said, certainly not. This has been prohibited only in open areas. If there is a barricade between you and the qibla, there is nothing wrong with it. And then he says this is related by Abu Dawood. Uh, Ibn Khuzayma and Al-Hakim Its chain is Hassan As Ibn Hajar said in Fath al-Bari So this uh, This is what the author mentioned about the topic So he mentioned two opinions um, One that it's Disliked and one That it's forbidden If you're outdoors And permissible if you're indoors So those are the two opinions That uh, the author mentioned So first just to comment a bit on the translation you might not have it in your translation for those who are following in their books. Um, but it should say Marawan al Asfar, not al Azhar. So that's the first thing. And secondly, we'll, we'll come to the, the narration of, um, of Ibn Umar. Um, but the authenticity of the narration of Ibn Umar, it was declared Sahih by Imam al Dara Qutni um, in his Sunan and the Nawawi in his. A book, his Sharh of Sahih Muslim, and other uh, some other scholars have authenticated or, or mentioned that it's Hassan. Um, so this hadith, most of the scholars accept it as being usable uh, for evidence. So that's just some comment or just some points to mention about the translation before we get into the, the issues or the rulings. So on this topic, of facing the qibla. Um, or, or having your back to it while, you, while, while relieving oneself, there's between, depending on how we divide it up, but there's between seven and nine opinions on the topic. Um, so, inshallah, we'll just we'll start with this and um, yeah, we'll, them well, well, some of them are very quick because there's no evidence, and some of them are, you know, they relate to the same evidences. They just understand them differently. Um, so, so you, you know, try to pay attention so you can understand what the evidences are being used and as you're hearing them try to think does this make sense from what we've learned already the, the different rules that we've learned or how we apply different ahadith try to keep in mind as you're listening to these ahadith does this make sense or does it not make sense and inshallah we'll discuss it who had their hand up? Yeah. so, so the topic is basically uh, one cannot have uh, yeah, one cannot be facing towards Qibla or cannot have their back towards Qibla. Right, <coughs> while, while going to the washroom. So, okay, so either the front and or the back. Or the back, right, right. Yeah. So basically facing it like whatever, like wasted. Yeah, so if this is the Qibla there, so you can't be facing it or you couldn't be facing this way when you're going to the washroom so either. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. it would have to be this way this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's not, no, that's not so in buildings. Right. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, so okay. keep in mind as we're, you know, try, you know, if there's something you don't agree with, keep it in your mind. If there's something that you don't understand, keep it in your mind. And inshallah, we'll, you know, we'll discuss it at the end. So the first opinion is that it's forbidden. Absolutely. So meaning whether it's urinating or defecating, whether it's in a building or outside of a building, um, all of, uh, and whether you're facing or having your back to it. So a any of the, these situations, that those would be um, forbidden. So that's the first opinion. This was the opinion of from the Sahaba, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, and Abu Huraira, uh, and uh, Ibn Mas'ud. So these were the Sahaba that took this opinion. And then from the Tabi'een, so the generation after the Sahaba, it was the opinion of Mujahid and Ibrahim al Nakhai and Sa'id ibn Jubair. And then from the scholars that came after that, so after that generation, it was the opinion of Sufyan al Thawri. Uh, it's one of the men, what's mentioned from Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and Abu Thawr, who Abu Thawr was uh, one of the companions of Imam al Shafi'i. Uh, also, Imam uh, al Awza'i. And Ata, and it's one of the narrations from Imam Ahmad, and it was the opinion of Ibn Hazm and Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al Qayyim and Al Shawkani and others. So, these were 
uh, many of the scholars who took this opinion. Um, so the opinion is uh, whether you're ways. facing or back, inside or outside, or outside. urinating or defecating, all, all any of them are, are forbidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So regardless if there's a wall or barricade. Regardless. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, the hadith of Abu Abd, uh, Abu Abd al Rahman that mm -hmm. uh, Ibn Umar. Ibn Umar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the hadith is Sahih. Well, well, we'll talk about it here. Okay. Because even even the ones some auth some accept it as authentic, but they they don't use they don't they they re reject the use of it. So we'll talk we'll talk about it, inshallah. Okay. Okay. When we talk about it, I'll yeah, ask yeah. You. So the evidence that they use first is a hadith from Abu Ayyub al Ansari, uh, radiyallahu anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا أتيتم الغائط فلا تستقبلوا القبلة ولا تستدبروها ولكن شرقوا أو غربوا. Um, so this is the hadith that the author mentioned that if any of you goes to the to, to relieve himself, then uh, let him not face or turn his back to the qibla, urinating or defecating, um, but instead face east or west. And that's uh, uh, narrated by a Muslim. Um, or narrated by the group and other, and, and that's the narration, the, 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 the phrasing of Imam Muslim. That, that's not the one that's in the book, is it? Uh, yeah. <coughs> the one in the book is Abu Harid. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, maybe it's maybe maybe the the book. But this is the the. Abu Ayyub. This is from Abu Ayyub because in the, in. So it's not Abu Huraira. What if they both? Well, they, there might be one from. There's a different one from Abu Huraira. Um, I'll mention it in a little bit. Um, so he might have mixed up the, the narrators. Sorry, then can you please repeat it? So from Abu Ayyub, that he said, that the, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِذَا أَتَيْتُمْ الْغَائِطِ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةِ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا وَلَكِنْ شَرِّقُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا Or that, uh, the, pro that the Prophet Sallallahu said, if any of you goes to relieve himself, then do not face the Qibla, nor turn your back to it, but rather... Go or turn east or west. But the phrase in here is different. It's not the same. Yeah, it, it said everything you said except the east and west. Yeah, he says إذا إذا جلس أحدكم لحاجة. That's Abu Huraira narration. Yeah, فلا يستقبل قبلة ولا يستدبرها. That's Abu Fats from Abu Huraira. Ahmed and Muslim. Okay. Well, I might maybe I mixed them up when I went in the translation then. Oh. But the Abu Ayyub one mentions إذا أتيت إذا أت أحدكم الغائط, and then the end says ولا كن شرقوا أو غربوا. The Abu Huraira one says, "إذا جلس أحدكم لحاجته." And yeah. this one is a Hassan one. Which? This one. Abu Huraira. No, no, they're both authentic. Okay. They're both. They're one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Face it's east or west, isn't it? Fa but face east or west. Uh, so they mention this hadith, and they also mention the hadith from Abu Huraira, which is narrated by Imam Muslim. That the Prophet وسلم, said, "إذا جلس أحدكم لحاجة على حاجته فلا يستقبل القبلة ولا يستدبرها." Um, or that if any of you sits down to relieve himself, then let him not face the qibla, nor turn his back to it. And that's from Abu Huraira, <coughs> uh, and it's narrated by Imam Muslim. And the third hadith that they mention, and this is when we talked about this last week or the week before, from uh, Abd Rahman ibn Zaid, that he said. Uh, that Salman al Farisi, it was said to him, قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْخِرَاءَةَ قَالَ فَقَالَ أَجَلْ قَدْ نَهَانَا أَنْ نَسْتَقْبِلَ الْقِبْلَةَ نِغَائِتٍ أَوْ بَوْلْ أَوْ أَنْ نَسْتَنْجِيَ بِالْيَمِينَ To the end of the hadith. So the, 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 that's the relevant part of the hadith. So from Abdurrahman ibn Zayd that he said, Salman was asked, so Salman al-Farisi, who was one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, was asked, or it was said to him, your Prophet ﷺ has taught you everything, even how to, even the, the matters related to defecation. And he said, of course, um, he taught us, or he uh, forbid us from facing the Qibla, um, facing the Qibla in urination, or while urinating, um, or, sort of, or while defecating or while urinating and until the end of the hadith. So the rest of the hadith is related to other matters of, of relieving oneself. And this hadith is narrated by Muslim, Abu Dawood and others. These are all authentic? So these are all authentic so far. So this is the evidence that's used by 
the ones who say that all of this is forbidden, regardless of where you are and or anything else, because they say these hadith didn't specify anything. They didn't say it's um, unless you're indoors or unless or or don't don't face the qibla, but you can have your back to it. And they didn't mention anything about whether it's urinating or defecating. So it was general. The Prophet ﷺ forbid these things. So we stick to what the Prophet ﷺ forbid. So this is uh, the, uh, the evidence for the first opinion. The second opinion is the exact opposite. That it's, it's all of it's allowed. So regardless of whether you're indoors, outdoors, facing, or have your back to it, urinating or defecating, that it's all allowed. Um, and this is the opinion of Aisha radiallahu anha and Urwa ibn Zubair and uh, one of the tabi'een whose name Rabi'at al-Ra'i who is from the, the, the sheikhs of Imam Malik uh, rahimahullah and Dawood ibn Ali uh, and one of the narrations from Imam Ahmed so who's Dawood ibn Ali who remembers from uh, right <laughs> Sorry, but look, uh, isn't it going, going against the whole? Uh, yeah, what are the hadiths? Well, though, we'll, we'll talk about it now then. So this is why it's important, and I'll just mention first, like, you know, we need to understand when someone tells us something is haram or halal or obligatory or recommended or anything. Why are they saying this? Because here we're going to see two opinions looking at. Or mentioning a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ with exactly complete opposite opinions. Obviously, one of them is right and one of them is wrong because they can't both be right. It can't be that something is haram and it's halal at the same time. It's impossible. How could we say that Allah judged that doing this is haram and it's halal? So, this opinion or this idea that people have sometimes that, well, you know, I asked the Shaykh and he told me it's halal, so it's fine. And then his best friend will come and say, well, I asked another Shaykh who said it's haram. And now they're stuck. Who's gonna? Who's right? Who's wrong? What are we gonna follow? And they're both gonna say the same thing. So this idea that, well, I just asked someone, and they told me it's fine, or they told me you're not allowed, and then we stop there. You know, that's it's not sufficient. It's not enough. We need to know why we're why we're believing something and why we're following something, and we sh- we have also we have the right to ask why. So if someone ever tells you that, you know what, I'm the sheikh. Or I'm, you know, the Imam, or I went to school for how long, or whatever, you know, things they tell you. So just listen to what I'm saying, or who do you think you are to ask me? It's complete garbage. Mm-hmm. Never, never let anyone tell you that. If they try to explain it and you don't understand it, that's another issue. But if they say, you know what, who are you to question what I say? It's, you know, don't listen to it at all. As we'll see here, if there's seven opinions on a topic, only one of them can be right. We know that. All of these people were scholars. They all had their own evidence. So that's the point of why we. You know, discuss it and talk about it to get your minds thinking and to look at, you know, the evidences of, of things. And you know, I some I know some of you have heard this before, but some of you are you know new today and some of you are you know newer from a couple of weeks. So, you know, that's why I just want to repeat that. <clears throat> so, as I said, the second opinion is that it's completely allowed. What is the evidence that they use? They use a hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah that he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد نهانا أن نستدبر القبلة أو نستقبلها بفروجنا إذا أهرقنا الماء ثم رأيته قبل موته بعام يستق بعام يبول مستقبل القبلة. Um, or from Jabir ibn Abdullah that he said, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to forbid us, or he had forbidden us from uh, facing the qibla um, or turning our backs to it while we were urinating then I saw him a year before he died urinating and he was facing the qibla so they mentioned this hadith it's narrated by Abu Dawood At-Tirmidhi Ibn Majah and others so they use this hadith and they say yes we accept the other hadith are authentic all of them are authentic but we have this one saying only a year before the Prophet Sallallahu died he was facing the qibla while urinating and this hadith Jabir is saying but before that he had forbidden us from doing so so this is the first evidence that they use so when someone comes and tells you any hadith that this is uh, you know this is the ruling on it because of this hadith what's the first thing we ask is it sahih is it authentic 
Did the Prophet ﷺ actually say this? Is it confirmed? Or did he not um, not say this? So this is the first thing. Um, this hadith, there's a dispute from the from the ulama about it. Um, some say that it's authentic, and, or some say that it's hasan, and some say that it's weak. Allahu alam, you know, it's it's a very tough one to, to judge upon. Weak, where like where are they? Where are they sensing the weakness? Is it in the the narration, like the chain of narration? The chair, yeah, the chain, chain. Cho- okay. Yeah. So, so is the, the chain hadith, weak? What's that? Sorry, the end part of the hadith that he saw Rasulullah facing or having back towards urinating while he was facing the qibla. So he said the chain of narration is a problem in this hadith? Well, there's some some said there is and some said there's not. Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. Okay, so for, the, for our purposes, yeah. what are we going to say about this hadith? Authentic, hasan, non-usable. Uh... At the most it's hasan. Allahu alam. At the most it's hasan. But there's another hadith coming up that is authentic and it, indi- it indicates the same or it could prove the same thing. So we'll mention that first and then we'll you know we'll discuss you know whether it would apply or not. So the next hadith is from Abdullah bin Umar that he said, and this is I think the author mentioned this. He said, oh no, he mentioned it from so that from Ibn Umar that he that it was said um, to him, in the nas and yaqulun. إذا قعدت على حاجتك فلا تستقبل القبلة ولا بيت المقدس قال ابن عمر لقد, لقد ارتقيت يوم يوما على ظهر بيت أو على ظهر بيت لنا فرأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على على لبنتين مستقبلا بيت المقدس لحاجته so um, this this hadith uh, mentions that Ibn Umar, it was said to him that some people say that if you sit down or if you go to relieve yourself, then don't face the Qibla um, nor Bayt al Maqdis. So Ibn Umar said, I stood up, or one day I climbed a, had, a house um, that we had, and I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sitting on two two blocks, or sitting like on two uh, brick, what's a lebna, like a brick, brick, yeah. brick, um, facing or uh, facing the Beit al Maqdis. So Beit al Maqdis is obviously um, in, you know Jerusalem now, um, or what you know they call in English. So he was facing that um, while uh, relieving himself. And this hadith is narrated by um, Al Bukhari. So what do we think? What, what would you say about this hadith? We know it's authentic. But okay. Yeah, exactly. okay. But we'll be back into okay. the Kaaba. He's facing. So if he's in Medina, right? So that means he's, he's facing, facing the Qibla. Yeah, if he's facing uh, 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 Quds, then he's back into Kaaba, to Mecca. Hmm. Sir. So? That's something you guys can figure out and then think about it. Okay, we'll think about it. It is, it is. Of then we'll. Okay. It is the opposite, isn't it? What do you mean, opposite? The opposite direction. Yeah, Between what and what? The Canadian. If you're facing, uh, if you're facing uh, uh, Al-Aqsa, Bayt al-Maqdis, then your back, your back is towards uh, Mecca. Okay. Because you don't even know there's the big dispute about, for example, when they changed the Qibla, right? Because the whole Sahabi who said, I want to turn something towards the Kaaba, then they said, how could you do that when facing... Actually, yeah, because, uh, what, what do you call it, um, what's the Qibla 10? Yeah, yeah. Uh, both of the Qibla, they are in two opposite directions. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, so, so yeah, so they gotta be, yeah. Some people will attack Islam and say that, oh, when we mix the two, we have her behind towards uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So there, now you figured out how is the evidence, right? So if they say the Prophet was was facing this, then, then he's back, then he's he's back to the other yeah. one, so it would be the same thing. 
this is Jerusalem over here, yeah. Bahr al-Ahmar, Saudi here. Yeah, it is. His well, back, his back would be towards Bet al-Muqtas. Yeah, back yeah. Be yeah so there. Here's Mecca, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. here's Medina. Yeah, yeah. And there's, uh, so if he was facing this way, then his back would be towards Medina. Any capital? Any capital, give me one. So it's the exact opposite, yeah. So that's how, so it shows the, you know, when you read a hadith, to understand actually what's being said in the hadith. Because you might find a hadith where you don't think about it, but the ulama or the scholars will extract something from a hadith that's not even mentioned in the hadith. Because this hadith has not, doesn't mention that he was facing or had his back to, to, the, to Mecca. All it says is he was, that he was facing Bayt al-Maqdis, right? But some of the scholars were able to look at that and say, okay, well, if he's doing that, obviously he's facing the, his back would be the other way. So they can, you know, you can use um, uh, a hadith for something that maybe, you know, some people didn't understand from it. So the hadith that <coughs> he, uh, he, uh, Ibn Umar, Umar stood on one of the houses and saw the Prophet sitting on two blocks, yeah. defecating and facing, facing Bayt al Maqdis. Yeah. How does back towards the cow? So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, he would be, yeah. Okay, so we would accept the other narration. Could we say, like, okay, in a sense, it's mutawatir? So even if we were saying uh, it's mutawatir, like, it came more than once. Like, Sorry. Uh, so we're saying, let's say, okay, we agree. Let's say the ulama who say the first hadith, okay, it's uh, it's live, or for some reason they say, okay, it's weak. But then you have the other ulama say, okay, this is Hassan, and then they bring this hadith, and this it's like they they use this as evidence for this hadith and as evidence for being outside and mustaqbil and mustandil al qabla, and we can say like tawatir tawatirat al hadith. So well, uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't be considered mutawatir. Like, how many hadith would there be when someone says mutawatir? Well, according to according to the earlier ulama, it's it's anything that's authentic from the Prophet sallam and everyone's accepted it. It doesn't matter if it's one or two or five or or forty. It doesn't I mean, matter. One or two or companions that narrate the hadith. No, even one, man. Even that's one. what I'm saying. If it's one or two or three or ten, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If it's authentic and everyone accepted it, then that's almost what. According yeah. to the earlier ulama, yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, so that's. Could it be? Could it be because? Maybe earlier it was not allowed to do it, but then it was It could be, it could be. It could be, yeah. So, but I mean, like, that's the, you know, one of the issues is uh, when it comes to saying, well, this was before and this was after. The only w- the only way we ever say, well, this is cancelled out, so it's no longer applies. First, there's two conditions, or there's more, but the two main conditions, first of all, we know the dates. Or we know actually, at least the general, we know that this came at the, before this one. Right, yeah. Because if we don't, we can't claim which cancels out. The second thing is that there's no other way to uh, explain. reconcile between them. Mm-hmm. So well, to here, explain to explain them, yeah. yeah. So like for this, someone could say, well, no, that was o- is only the, having your back is fine. Right, yeah. So then the whole thing, you know, the, there's no reason to say it's cancelled. So that's why... You know, it's uh, that's why it needs lots of discussion. But how could you say that having a back when every single front match is back and front? Well, then they'll say, well, what the Prophet was doing it here. Are any of them because mentioning that, that he did it? Like so if they okay, said they seen, seen him, but we have another front. Uh, uh, any of them mention like the location or anything? Mm-hmm. Or like so where they seen him? No, like was he? Did he have a sip in front of him? Or was he hiding? Some of them. We'll talk about that after. Okay. Uh, right now it's all it, like you can't it. really decide right now. But well, uh, I don't know if the hadith is the same. Okay, so this is the first. So we have two opinions so far, that it's allowed, and that it's not allowed. And we have the hadith that, that who say it's not allowed that the Prophet Sallallahu forbid it. Uh, some say you know uh, whether you're urinating, defecating. Some say, but they all say facing and and turning your back to it. And then the other ones have. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of them mentions that he was facing or he was urinating and facing the qibla, um, and one of them mentions that he was uh, defecating, or it doesn't say he was defecating. It says that he was sitting down on on two blocks and was was uh, relieving himself. Um, uh, so this is this is the the two opinions. So we'll go to the next opinion and mention their evidence. Inshallah. At the end, once we hear all the evidence, we can kind of uh, look to 
um, trying to figure them out because if we don't have all the evidences yet, then we can't um, we can't make a decision. So that's you know what we said first. When someone tells you something, the first thing you do is ask whether it's authentic. But another thing, so the first thing when we're talking about a topic, the first thing we need to do is gather all the evidence on the topic. From the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, what did the Sahaba say, what did they do, gather it all together, that's the first step. Second, weed out what's, what's, what's um, weak and keep what's authentic and then we can make a judgment. So that's the first two opinions. The third opinion is that it's permitted inside of buildings um, and forbidden when you're out in the open. Um, and that's that's the narration from Abdullah bin Umar, or that's his opinion, and it's also Imam Malik and the Shafi'i, Al Bukhari, and Ishaq bin Rahuya, and it was one of the narrations from um, Imam Ahmad, and Ibn Hajar al Asqalani mentioned that it's it's the opinion of the majority of the scholars, and the evidence that they use is they mention a hadith from. Uh, from uh, Ibn Umar um, radiallahu anhuma that Marwan al-Asfar so it's the same narration that the author mentioned but um, we'll mention it now because like I said there were some mistakes in the translation so Marwan al-Asfar said Ra'aytu Ibn Umar anakha rahilata mustaqbil al-qibla thumma jalas uh, yabulu ilayha faqultu ya Aba Abdurrahman alaysa qad نهي عن 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 هذا قال بلا إنما نهي عن ذلك في الفضاء فإذا كان بينك وبين القبلة شيء يسترك فلا بأس. So Abu Dawood narrated from uh, Ibn um, from Marwan al Asfar that he said I saw Ibn Umar um, set his camel down or uh, you know get it to sit down or lie down um, facing the qibla um, then he uh, then he uh, uh, got down and he was facing it and he urinated in, in its direction. So I said, Oh, Abd- oh Abu Abdurrahman, was, wasn't this something that was forbidden? So he said, of course, but it was only forbidden um, if you're out in the open. But if there's something between you and between the Kaaba or the Qibla mm-hmm. which um, covers you, then there's no problem with it. Um, in this hadith, um, some have said that it's authentic and some said that it's Hassan. Allahu alam it's Hassan um, from Ibn Umar. Um, so it's 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 usable as the opinion of Abdullah bin Umar. So we would confirm that this was Abdullah bin Umar's opinion and that he actually understood the ahadith to mean that it was uh, forbidden if you're out if you're out in the open, but it was permissible if um, uh, if you're inside of a building. And then after he mentioned that, in another narration of it, he, he goes on to mention the story of when he saw the Prophet ﷺ um, uh, facing or having his back story towards the Qibla. So here we see that Ibn Umar mentioned, or he understood from uh, the Prophet ﷺ um, uh, doing this or having his back towards the Qibla that the ahadith in which he forbid it only applied to being outdoors because when he saw um, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, there was something between him and between the Qibla. So there was something blocking him. It wasn't out in the open. So it shows that Ibn Umar understood that this was um, uh, the thing that restricted the hadith. So the Prophet ﷺ's statements are general, but his action restricted it to being uh, only applying when you're outdoors or out in the open. Um, so inshallah we'll, we'll stop there for now We'll mention the rest next week um, Just because there's probably some questions And then if there's any questions Just about, it, about the Salat issue Because um, I know a number of you Have, have dealt with it um, In the last few days Or have discussed the issue with people So inshallah we'll stop there And open it for questions